All right, it's party time, Mom. Welcome to Monday. Uh, good to be with you guys again. Hope you had a good weekend. We are in the mothership, which is Studio 22. Kayla and Chris are driving us into the nether regions of all things insanity. And trust me, the insanity is raging across the planet. Hope everyone is buckled in. All right, folks. Um, straight from chadprather.com. Let's get right into this. The nasty big government establishment. Uh, and simply not knowing what to do about this massive freedom convoy. You know, all those trucks that are making their way and have made their way now all the way across Canada and descended on the capital, Ottawa, which couldn't be more emblematic of the fed up working class masses who have been sidelined by, tyr by tyrannical governments. So naturally, wait for it, folks, wait for it. Naturally, all these truckers showing up in Ottawa, the establishment is claiming the movement is what? racist and now they're saying it's backed by russia i mean of course it is come up with something original guys according to the bbc police were investigating a nazi flag spotted at uh on the second day of the convoy's demonstration around government buildings in ottawa as the protest movement's official social media pointed out a suspiciously fully masked bearer of a confederate flag that it claimed was a plant but while Canadian media has been slammed for trying to link the group to extremists with the thinly veiled impression that the whole thing is a covert white supremacist movement. Yeah, I'm so tired of even saying stuff like that. One television host decided to just throw in implications that Russia really funded the movement. It was CBC's Neil Coxell who suggested while speaking with public safety minister Marco Mendocino on Friday that perhaps the Kremlin was really behind this convoy of trucks because of Canada's support for Ukraine, <laughs> which Russia is currently kind of lightweight threatening to invade, which, as Ukraine's president pointed out last week, isn't exactly a novel move from Moscow. They made a history of this. He said, I do ask that because given Can Canada's support of Ukraine in this current crisis with Russia, I don't know if it's far-fetched to ask, but <laughs> there is concern that Russian actors could be continuing to fuel things as this protest grows, but perhaps even instigating it from the outset. This is ridiculous. Uh, in the typical spokesperson for the government fashion of tossing a Molotov cocktail into the public forum and then running away without any accountability, Mendocino evaded answering this preposterous question outright, replying that he was going to defer to their partners in the public safety of trained officials and experts in that area and ensuring that the officials would be monitoring the protest to ensure it was peaceful and safe, etc. By the way, uh, Chris, I'll toss in that the truckers are now saying that they have enough supplies that they can make this last for two to four years. Yeah. So Cuxel did not evade. Uh, he didn't evade a bashing on Twitter, which couldn't resist commenting on the obviousness of this claim on a scale of one to Joe Biden. How stupid does the media think we are? But this is the trend. Once the media loses their narrative to freedom lovers, they resort to lies about extremism. Don't you know they have papers to sell? They've got ads to sell, folks. They've got to spin it all about the spin. Now, they've gotten they got a real yen. Now, bear in mind that CBC receives funding from the Canadian government. That's the entity whose premier, <laughs> uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, I'm calling him the premier. Uh, he declared last week that the convoy was a fringe minority with unacceptable views on vaccines and mandates. Now, that is the leader of the supposedly free country, although the last several years certainly call this claim into question. He just told a massive peaceful protest movement that they're not allowed to think what they think about vaccine mandates and the way the Canadian government has treated the working class these last two years. Um, yeah, the Russians don't need to fund the Freedom Convoy. Uh, there are enough pissed off Canadians and Americans who are sick and tired of the mandates, the narratives, the patronizing and false claims from the establishment that grassroots populist movements are either racist, foreign backed or both. Just keep lying to the people, CBC. It's only making them angrier and less willing to participate in this failed attempt to squelch the last semblances of liberty in the West. Now, 
On the flip side, President Trump, of course, he was in Texas on Saturday. Uh, he's never been one to pull punches or side with sissies like Justin Trudeau over real people like the Canadian truckers composing this Freedom Convoy. So it should come as no surprise that he praised the Freedom Convoy during his Saturday rally in Conroe, Texas. And during that rally, one well attended by thousands upon thousands upon thousands of patriots and a whole lot of Trump supporters, he praised the Canadian truckers for defending freedom and attacking lawless mandates in a way America's leaders haven't. He said the Canadian truckers uh, that you've been reading about, he said uh, they're resisting bravelessly. These lawless mandates are doing more to defend American freedom than our own leaders by far. And we want those great Canadian truckers to know that we are with them all the way. How about that? Now, in addition to praising the Freedom Convoy, Trump also called on those Republicans that win in the expected 2022 red wave to reinstate all those American service members who were fired by the military at Team Brandon's behest for refusing to get the jab. Now, Trump's comments were about the exact opposite of what Justin Trudeau, who fled Ottawa as the truckers entered the city like a despot of old, fleeing the angry peasants carrying their pitchforks and their torches. Trump's strong pro-freedom convoy stance is likely... Uh, part just in his nature and part calculated, though it's believable that he supports um, the truckers because their spirit is his. It's also likely an issue that he's trying to place himself on the side of as a way of removing that whole vaccine albatross from around his neck because he kind of stuck his foot in that one. Um, the vaccine issue is one where Trump is of quite a different stance than his base. He's praised them, though saying that it shouldn't be mandatory, while most members of the base aren't particularly enthusiastic about the vaccine pushed on them by Fauci. Similarly, he's struggling because he didn't fire Fauci uh, as a, you know, with those uh, all those dictatorial impulses. Then they became evident during the late spring and early summer of 2020. 2020. So here's the deal. By placing himself alongside the anti-mandate freedom convoy and similar issues such as taking the side of those fired for not getting the jab, Trump's likely hoping that he can avoid that albatross and reinvigorate his base heading into both the midterms and the run-up to the 2024 election. We'll see what happens. Um, who knows? It'll probably be successful if he chooses to run. In any case, Trump's words on the Freedom Convoy likely encapsulate how his base feels on the issue. I think you and I can agree on that. Uh, by protesting in such a visible manner, they're fighting for freedom in a way that very few Americans have. And now I read that they're about to start one in Australia. So more power to them. Uh, we've got that clip from the CBC. Uh, let's play that clip right quick. Uh, you know, given Canada's support of Ukraine in this current crisis with Russia, it, I don't know if it's far-fetched to ask, but, but there is concern that Russian actors could be continuing to fuel things uh, as, this, as this protest grows, but perhaps even instigating it from, from the outset. So all you have to do, all you have to do is just plant someone in a situation, you know, uh, holding the wrong flag or wearing the wrong thing. I mean, we saw back when uh, whatever it was, one of those protests that was going on in Washington, D.C. just a couple of months ago. And, and those guys that were obviously federal agents out there looking like frat boys, you know, we, we know that this kind of stuff happens. But so I posted on uh, Twitter in... Um, Got a great response there where I said, I now identify as a Canadian trucker. <laughs> and so people, they went crazy on it. But of course, the trolls had to go nuts and said, of course, you would identify with these people. You know, the person holding a Nazi, somebody's holding a Nazi flag. And then they had the Confederate flag. But if you if you look at the full picture, you see that that was a planted deal. Um, so, look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This thing, it stretches like 100 miles. Yeah. I don't know how they'll ever get all those trucks out of Ottawa. Look, it, it was impossible to get to the Trump rally on Saturday. Um, like people were sitting there for three hours. So what I did was I saw what was happening. I had VIP access to the Trump rally. But I was hanging with some other folks. We were putting out some yard signs and stuff. And, um, and I uh, some signs along campaign signs along the highway for me. And I finally made the kind of an executive decision. I said, I'm not going to go to the Trump rally. I'll probably catch some crap for it. Um, but we went to um, downtown Conroe. We, uh, they closed off um, my friend Debbie Glenn. She uh, owns Red, Red Brick Tavern right there in Conroe. Many of you know it. It's great pizza, great bar, great place, great restaurant, great venue. Um, and they closed off their section, their block of Main Street and uh, put up a big screen and we watched it out there on the street and had a good crowd of folks but folks were saying that they had sat for like three hours without moving on their way to the trump rally 
Uh, and Conroe doesn't have some big major thoroughfares <laughs> going through it into the fairgrounds, so I can't imagine what was going on getting out of there. And so I, that's not my that's not my deal right there. Um, but anyway, uh, interesting rally. I don't know. You know, Trump said a couple of things that I thought were were supportive. Um, he of course said that he believes in a pardon for those involved with January sixth. Uh, you got that clip. Oh, uh, oh, my thoughts. I thought you said sot. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that this thing needs to be exposed for what it is. Um, I think that they're trying to make an example out of some of these folks um, who just acted in many cases, quite honestly, in ignorance. Um, they did. They did it. Many of them did an ignorant thing. I don't think a lot of them even knew they were doing something wrong. Uh, there were some instigators to that. These are my opinions on January 6th. I mean, uh, but again, this was this was how this is how you stall or you prevent real freedom rallies from happening. Right. You set something up that happens like January 6th. And then when a freedom convoy happens in Canada, now everybody's scared. Like I know people who are like, I'm not going back to Washington, D.C. Like like if, imagine what would happen. If I went to Washington, D.C., me personally, if I go to Washington, D.C., and they took a picture of me in front of the Capitol, standing there showing my patriotic support, visiting a national monument, you know, an iconic image, and, and they did. Uh, what, what do you think the interwebs and the trolls are going to say? Oh, yeah, you're planning an attack, or what are you going to do? I've already had people coming at me because they said I was at some of the Stop the Steal rallies prior to January 6th. That was not in D.C. on January 6th. We were right here in the studio. Um, but I was there and they said, oh yeah, you were part of the planning. And I'm like, you're a dumbass, Okay. Um, you know, so if you were to do that now, so now what they've done is they've made it taboo for you to be in those places, appear in those places, take pictures in those places. And so anything that you want to do that, that, that talks about freedom or patriotism, they're going to come at you. They're going to, they're going to try to cancel you out. Um, and so that's what they did here in America. But that's why these Canadians, it's significant that they've stepped up and are doing what they're doing. Now, if Australia chooses to do it, I hope they do. Um, I, and again, I read the report this morning. One trucker said, look, we got enough supplies. We could, we could sit here parked around the Capitol for two to four years. One guy, one reporter asked a trucker, uh, said, you know, how, how long do you intend to be here? And he said, until Trudeau resigns, until the mandates are lifted and Trudeau or Trudeau resigns. And I think these folks mean it. Um, and so more power to them. We raised money for, for fuel and supplies last week, and we'll continue to do so. Uh, watch Chad.com's where all the fun stuff is. And, um, you know, I, I just believe in it. I've said this over and over again. The only way anybody's going to win in this is when we have mass, uh, mass civil disobedience and just shutting things down. Um, you know, Glenn talks about, and, and Glenn, all he's talked about for the last couple of weeks since his new book, The Great Reset, has come out, has been things like your ESG scores. And, you know, we talk about that in the next segment, but um, they're coming for you, man. I mean, they're, they're going to shut you down. They're, everything that we do, um, they're, they're going to steal your ability to do business. They're going to rob you of your ability to trade. Uh, and so there's no greater example to me than these truckers, which I've said over and over again, these over the road truckers, they are the blood on the arteries and the roads, which are American, you know, and Canadian and, and just they're the, they're the ones that keep us free, keep us moving, keep us in supplies, keep us fed, keep us taken care of, keep us comfortable uh, and so many other things. And it just really bugs the piss out of me, really does when I'm, I'm driving around. And I stop in a store and I see things that are missing. I see things that aren't on the shelves. I go past a car dealership and, and they're bare. Like these are the kind of things I'm like, it just, this whole supply chain issue is pissing me off. It brings me back to the whole Biden fiasco that we're looking at. But just the whole thing is interconnected, right? And at some point in time, patriots have got to stand up, stand together, and shut down the, the, these these. Oh, my gosh. We'll talk about some more of this stuff. But the big tech censorship, the, the marketplace tyranny, the, the commercial tyranny, the corporate tyranny that's going on. We've got to stop this, man, because they want to control you. They want to control you, and they're trying as hard as they can. It's all about the collective and not the individual. They want to penalize the individual, 
and they want to promote the collective. We'll talk about that after the break. Um, I'll tell you one company that I really love that stands up and does exactly what I'm talking about is Patriot Mobile. Um, I'm thankful for them. I really am. Um, whether it's on this show or other conservative shows, Turning Point, CPAC, March for Life, tons of different areas. These guys are there. I've seen them there. I've visited with them in their booths at these at these uh, you know these um, conventions. Hang out. We take the selfies. We have a good time. They're fun people, but they're patriots, and that's why I'm proud to partner with them. They're my friends. They're the only Christian conservative cell phone provider that's out there, and uh, they want to partner with you. Uh, they offer broad nationwide coverage. In fact, they use the same towers as the major carriers, so you get the same great nationwide coverage, plus peace of mind that your money isn't supporting the left. Somebody said the other day, they said, well, we worry about the coverage. You don't have to worry about the coverage. And not only that, the cost, Patriot no- Mobile – Patriot Mobile's got plans to fit any budget. Their 100% U.S.-based customer support team provides exceptional customer support. And uh, Patriot Mobile shares your values and supports organizations fighting for religious freedom, constitutional rights, sanctity of life, and our veteran and first responders. Heroes, folks. Go to PatriotMobile.com slash Chad. You can call 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation with offer code CHAD. I spell it, Chad. You know the veterans first responders are going to save even more. Switch today. Support the company that loves America and loves you and your values. PatriotMobile.com slash Chad. 972 Patriot. Be right back. So I every time we've got the clock and we've got to go to break, I get to I, I feel like I'm leaving things out because I'm just talking so fast, man. And uh, I, I was able to do a podcast the other day. It hasn't been released yet with my buddy. Uh, <laughs> my buddy uh jimmy rogers he's got a new podcast called sailor jimmy and uh yeah, i miss that kind of long form just being able to talk have a conversation you know uh but i'm gonna slow down because I, I want you guys to see this stuff this is important stuff um first play that clip of the uh of the trucker Avi Yemeni for Rebel News in Wodonga, Victoria, where behind me, one of many convoys from around the country heading to Canberra to converge on Parliament in the capital, standing against vaccine mandates in solidarity with their counterparts in Canada. We have dozens of trucks here in this particular convoy with hundreds of cars. This is going to be massive today in our capital. Yeah, so that's, that's Australia. Uh, that's huge. That's huge. Uh, freedom is contagious. And I've told people, you know, in many, many speeches, I've said, you know, the, the key to whatever you want to call it, revival, reawakening, um, is when you have people that are in bondage and they start getting set free. Now, you can, you can apply that to religion. You can apply that to government. You can apply that to, to financial stability, right? You start setting people free. And, uh, you know, they, they're like somebody coming out of the closet, man. They're happy. They're happy. Like, you know, like, like the burden has been lifted. And so, you know, the burden is not lifted uh, for patriots out there. They're not. And when you have Trudeau, what a panty waste that dude is, who's now faking his COVID. He doesn't have COVID. I mean, he doesn't have COVID. I mean, this dude's a slime ball, man. Uh, he's just scared of the big mean truckers. He's running faster than Pete Davidson from Yee. Right? He's like Pete Davidson scared that uh, Kanye is going to beat his ass. But he's scared. And so he doesn't want to face it. That's piss poor. And again, as I said earlier, this is about, um, we'll play the clip of the, play the, play the freedom clip. I love that. Yeah. What a bunch of insurrectionists, you know, people loving freedom. They wouldn't be there. Look, they wouldn't be there if you weren't mandating their life, determining their their freedoms. I mean, determining their uh, 
uh, what they got to stick in their body and stuff like this. And again, you can get you can get seventeen thousand boosters. You can do it till your arm falls off. You know I don't care. You're free to go do that. But <clears throat> to mandate it is a different story. Why we have to keep talking about this thing? Why don't people have enough common sense? So you're going to call this a fringe group? Um, that just pisses me off. That just pisses me off. That what they mean, what they what they're saying is forget free speech. And again, Canadians don't have the same rights that we have here in America. No. All right, they don't have the same rights, uh, so we kind of take that for granted. So that's why, to me, it's even more significant that this group of folks are doing what they're doing in Canada as well as Australia. You know, Australia, look, you, you, they got stricter gun laws in all these places, so they're just like, you know what we'll do. We'll just, we'll just show you what, how we control the supply chain. We'll just show you what we can do with a truck um, and do it peacefully. Um, but the collective versus the individual, the collective versus the individual, that's why, you know, everybody's trying to censor Joe Rogan right now. Because, again, God forbid somebody has free speech, has an opinion that differs from what, you know, the, the collective tells you you're supposed to have. And uh, the whole thing, man, you got um, these these truckers, man, I'm proud of them. So, I, you know, we tried to come up with a, a T-shirt. I'll tell you how effed up the whole thing is for us. So we tried to come up with a T-shirt to sell that we thought would, you know, we could donate the proceeds. And we were going to do a new T-shirt. Like we, we I, I mean, I was racking my brain when this thing first started, you know, uh, truck Trudeau, um, and, uh, you know, Canucks and trucks. I mean, there were all kind of things. And we were going to sell. We can't even get the shirts in. I mean, that's how, that's how screwed up our supply chain is. So in, order to, <laughs> so in order to support those people who support our supply chain, we can't even get shirts in blanks to get the shirts made on time to make it relevant to be able to do it. So we just, you know, we've got our America Runs on Truckers shirt. We started just donating the proceeds from that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't know what the outcome of this is going to be, but it thrills me to no ever loving end just to know that people are doing something that because let me tell you something, revolution, rebellion, protesting, um, civil disobedience, making a statement, all of those are uncomfortable. They're inconvenient. I promise you it's cold in Canada right now. Uh, and those people outside protesting, holding up their flags, holding up their signs, and just taking, taking uh, you know, time from their life for, for God knows how long it's going to be. So uh, support them. Support them. And, you know, it's so weird. It's so weird. I saw a cartoon the other day that just kind of summed it up. They talked about, you know, liberals from the 1960s and then liberals in 2022. And how liberals in the 60s were all about civil disobedience and about, you know, screw, screw the man. And, you know, um, the big government was bad and the collective was bad. And now and now that's exactly what they're promoting. They want you to fall in line. They want you to bow the knee. They want you to bend over and take it. That's what they want. Um, so there was a Washington Post political cartoon. They call the, uh, they call the uh, trucker convoy fascism. You can see it right there. So, and to remind you guys, this has been going on now for, for two weeks. So two weeks this has been going on. And uh, 50,000 Canadian truck drivers. And um, the cartoon, um, I love that that thing got bashed pretty hard. Uh, they put it on Twitter. And um, the it, one... One, one said, um, the far-left Washington Post, owned by one of the world's wealthiest and most powerful men, defends tyranny of the elite regime. It's part of the saying that citizen opposition to it is, you guessed it, fascism, such evil. Um, Wikipedia co-founder Larry Sanger said, the irony here is outrageous and ridiculous. They are desperately protesting against governments that are forcing them to inject substances in their bodies. For this, you call them fascist. Uh, Tim Poole. Our buddy, he said, uh, these people think that when the working class resists the elites, it's fascism. <laughs> yeah. 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 The movement shares an affinity with Trumpist toxic authoritarianist politics. Um, that was uh, 
that's uh, I, I, you know, these kind of things. I, I, yeah, they are driven by generalized rage, misplaced anger about supply chain challenges, and anti-government sentiment. Yeah, let's let's praise the government. Why not? Let's worship bare bare shelves. Let's do that. Um, I mean, look, I, I got a buddy of mine who uh, just bought a truck, and uh, it took like eleven months for him to get it. For him to, I mean, this is a Ford truck just for him to build the thing out. Took him like nine, ten months. So, anyway, absolute insanity, man. Uh, I'm, you know what? I'm excited about. So, I'm making some healthier decisions these days, Chris. I mean, we're all kind of health conscious anyway, right? We all are. I mean, we have to. You have to deal with it. I mean, we are faced with a real thing that is contagious. So the healthier you are, the better off you are in facing things like the flu or the cold and all this kind of stuff. So I love, I love these pills right here because this basically just combines everything I've been taking. Uh, you got the zinc, quercetin, the vitamin C, vitamin D, all in one pill. It's great. So you can't, you can't rely on the government or big pharma to protect you or your family. That's where z Stack's going to come in. It's a specially formulated immune-boosting supplement that's going to include those four supplements, zinc, quercetin, vitamin C, vitamin D. Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, he's the, he's the formulator of this, world-renowned doctor that President Trump credited with his successful early treatment protocol and his decision to take hydroxychloroquine. Uh, Z-Stack's been scientifically formulated. It's kosher. It's GMP certified, produced right here in the USA. Chris takes it every day. I'm taking it. I love this stuff. And I, I don't like taking a big handful of pills. So the fact that I can just do it in one pill is nice, right? And uh, it's nice. And, I mean, I was, I was looking for one medication, actually a prescription medication, that my doctor was talking to me about recently. And it's like, you can't even get it in the U.S. anymore. So you better get healthy. They're going to make it where you can't even get prescription medications, so don't get sick in the first place. So stay ahead of any potential f uh, future variants by preparing your immune system. Go to zstacklife.com slash Chad. Enter promo code C-H-A-D. I spell it Chad. They'll get a uh, get you a little discount off your first order. That's Z, the letter Z, stacklife.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. This is what healthy sounds like. There it is. Go get it. Oh, boy. Welcome back. Um, you know, when you get right down to it, some things in life just don't mix well. I had a friend of mine who was uh, eating crawfish yesterday and drinking mimosas. That's kind of weird. Uh, things like oil and water, orange juice and toothpaste, Pete Davidson and comedy. Um, of course, the purveying of sex toys and fundraisers for kids' soccer teams, those don't go together. Uh, I'm guessing when I pair these two incongruent things in a sentence, you probably think, uh, where could that happen? Mm, California. <laughs> and right you would be, folks. California, the place where dreams go to become homeless. California, where wokeism wakes with the rising sun and rides the surf of our collective consciousness all day, reminding us that stupidity and insanity has a tendency to pile up like a yard full of dog shit. California, a land of bad ideas. Now, here's the breakdown. There's a soccer club in Sacramento called the Natimus Football Academy. Their stated mission Everyone plays soccer. Sounds pretty peachy, sort of like a YMCA kind of thing. And like lots of other organizations of this sort, they do fundraisers. If you're a parent, you're probably already dragging out your crucifix and a few cloves of garlic because you know that fundraisers suck. Well, this one was uh, doing maybe a little bit more than that because, among other things they were doing to raise money, the Academy was sending out emails linking to pure romance. Okay, that's a website that sells adult toys and sexually themed products. Wendy Hill, the Natimus Academy Leadership Secretary, who is also a consultant for this pure romance company, seems to be the one, pardon the expression, spearheading this particular fundraiser attempt. Uh, and now she's the one doing her damnedest to stamp out the brush fire that erup erupted once parents took the time to read the emails they normally would have probably deleted on site. Now, to be fair to the Academy... They've pulled this particular fundraiser down and closed down the links for it, so credit where it's due. They made a public apology, said they weren't intending to offend anyone, and that they wouldn't do it again in the future. Uh, we got to be willing to forgive folks in our society uh, and working towards restoring damaged relationships, the inability to do that, which as I've referred to earlier, 
both collectively and individually. It's a huge part of the problem we face today as Americans. But of course, there's always the other side of the coin. And in this case, that other side is accountability. Because after all, we're talking about something that involves kids. If you want to hawk adult toys online all day, please be my guest. Go for it. Hell, I'll even take a look at what you got. But using that as a fundraiser for kids' soccer, I mean, come on. Nothing about that idea rang any danger bells in your mind when you were setting that up. Come on. Uh, What we probably have here is a case of one person doing a little self-enrichment by incorporating a company that she works for into a venture with another company she works for. What we definitely have, whether they mean it or not, is another case of inappropriately mixing things that should not go together in our society. As an isolated incident, it doesn't mean much, but ask yourself this. If this were a hidden motive behind this, what would it be? Because it's not an isolated incident. Uh, We see the Venn diagram of hypersexualization and our nation's kids overlapping all the darn time. We're continually exposing it on this show. Now, if anything, this might be one of the more minor examples of it, but it's still not something we should be sanctioning and overlooking. Uh, And the parents who, good for them, stepped up and got this thing shut down, those parents now have an obligation to put these people on probation. Keep an eye on what they do in the future. See if it was just a mistake or a tentative step in the direction that they really want to go. Keep your head on a swivel, folks. Sometimes there's evil in the world and sometimes they're stupid. And sometimes there's something there's something that's just both of those things. It's your job to figure out which is which and project, protect your kids from it until they're able to protect themselves. Now, I tell you, um, <laughs> I have to laugh at that. Because here's this woman who thought, oh, yeah, sure. Like, this is when soccer mom, literally soccer mom mentality goes too far. Like, I'm just kind of like, I'm going to have my sex parties, my wine and women parties, you know. (laughs) And I'm like, why not? Why not engage all the soccer moms that are out there looking for a new rabbit? Uh, Like, that to me is is I, I get just like the immature naivety of this whole thing but can we please can we please can we please for the love of all that is sacred and holy get get some kind of common sense back when it comes to associating certain things with what our kids are involved in i mean we're already dealing with the schools we're already dealing. can we not do it at the at the local little league level i mean th- this is this is bad uh, if 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 you're buying i mean if you're buying a rubber pecker um it, to support you know the kids soccer thing um and i don't know maybe i need to start hanging out at the soccer leagues chris well, like, well, like maybe that's where i belong and i get it you know like the Krispy cream donuts fundraising <laughs> i know that gets tiring or the chocolate yeah or the, popcorn the cookies or the lasagna <laughs> i get it <laughs> But can we put some common sense? Uh, Do you want little Johnny say, hey, here's your rabbit. Here's your 10-inch what? Here's your dolphin. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm going to start doing – I'm going to start doing – you know, if we get all this stuff off these trucks or driving all across the country, um, I'm going to start doing – I'm going to start supplying batteries at the local soccer fields. I'm telling you. This tells me a lot. This, this is very revealing to me, Chris. Very revealing to me. But on a serious note, can we, I, we've really got to take our kids back. And, and, and you know what? Also, can we, stop, can we stop signing our kids up for everything? My gosh, how many leagues does your kid have to be? And how many fundraising things? I mean, how much stuff? And, and again, I keep saying that's a, it's entrapment. It gets the parents trapped because you parents want to live vicariously through your kids. And you don't want your kid to miss out. And you got major FOMO. And so you don't want your kids missing out on anything. And uh, But ultimately, it's you replaying your own childhood and, and doing it in a different way. But, I mean, I, I know people, they got their kids right now. They got them in baseball. They got them in football. They got them in tennis. You don't, you don't have time for that. You do not have time for that. Oh, I just want my kids to be entertained. Stop with the whole convenience thing and farming your kids out to these weird and and you know what you're robbing yourself of time you're robbing yourself of quality time with your kids and being able to you know talk to them and oh my gosh man anyway anyway that's my two cents i'm gonna check what was it called true romance on you <laughs> might have to go see what's up see if i can uh maybe make a little visit to california 
Um, want to remind everybody too. We've got uh, some new shirts. We've got some new shirts that are pretty good. Our Biden inflation shirt uh, is is now up on uh, chatonblaze.com, so you can go check out some of those new shirts. I, we also have the new shirt. My one, my one original design on there. I just sent over. Kamala sucks. That's on chatonblaze.com. You can wear that around the soccer leagues. Uh, Kamala sucks. Um, but there's a few few new shirts on there, so go to chatonblaze.com. And I don't know how you guys are doing. Don't don't you go turning this off yet. We still have a whole other segment going to get wild. Uh, I don't know if you guys um, know this or not, but uh, we're well on our way to 100,000 new subscribers. <laughs> so uh, go to chadnude.com. And just today we were talking about uh, how we're setting up our new overtime segment, and it's only going to be on Blaze TV. Chadnude.com. Go sign up. Don't move we're not done be right back so what's the deal you know you you stand for freedom you want to be left alone uh I've told you before, you want to make money, you don't want to be taxed, you, you'll want to be able to retire, own your home, watch your grandkids play, live a nice, long, free, fruitful life, right? That's what you want to be able to do. I don't think that's fascism. I don't think that that is uh, too much to ask of society, especially since so much blood has been shed over the last couple hundred years to make sure that this freedom is protected. I mean, what I just described is, in essence, the American dream. Now, why do we want to let the collective steal that? Why do we, why, I mean, our grandfathers went to Europe, and, and they bled, they died. They, you know, there was so much sacrifice, and we can't even get involved with our kids' education. We can't even get involved with, you know, the school board. We can't even get involved with the political process. We've basically allowed the whole political process to just go to shit, right? So all weekend long, I had all these events, and I meet people who don't really know who I am. They come up to me, and they're like, why did you get involved? Like, why? And I'm like, why aren't you getting involved? You know, I didn't, I didn't have to get involved in a campaign. I didn't have to run for office. And people say, oh, well, you know, you're, you don't poll as well. as You don't, one, you don't know that. We're doing quite well, honestly. By the way, today was the last day to register to vote or to change your address in the state of Texas. Uh, primary voting starts on February 14th. Primary election day is March 1st. Get involved, folks. At least show up and do that. But, you know, people are saying, you didn't have to do this. No, I don't have to do this. I did not have to do this. Uh, one of the hardest yet most rewarding experiences of my life this last year and a half. Um, and we're busting our tails. Why? Because I think it's worth the inconvenience. I think fighting for freedom and making your voice heard and, and letting the people, the, you know, the little folks out there, and we're all little folks, right? All of us out there that just really want to uh to make sure that the man the big government you know big brother that they hear our voice and whether that's driving a truck honking the horn putting out a sign putting out a flag a bumper sticker wearing a t-shirt whatever it is we just want to be heard because at the end of the day you just want to be left alone and and you know to to say you know whether you're saying let's go brandon or or whatever it may be you know, you're engaged in a nonviolent, peaceful protest of, of you're, you're voting with your pocketbook. You're choosing whether you want to boycott or you just don't want to give your money to anybody that, that doesn't have your same values. That's your choice. That's the beauty of living in America. You know, in China, I heard Glenn talking about this this morning. In China, you can't leave your house without your phone. You've got to have your cell phone. It, that facial recognition will, will, will ID you in the street. The police will come to you and want to know why you're not carrying your phone. That ought to tell you the dangers of these little devices right here. Listening in, tracking you. They already have your facial recognition. They have your fingerprint. They know all of these different things about you. This, this thing contains every detail about your life. Um, 
And it's, you know, do we want to get to that point where the Big Brother Collective is truly telling us what the American dream is? I don't want that redefined. I do not want the American dream redefined. I don't want my kids, I don't want my kids brainwashed. I have a story for you for tomorrow okay. that is going to blow your mind, and you probably heard about it, where the IRS may start requiring facial scans yeah. in order for you to access your documents. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's getting real, dude. Oh. It, it's getting it's getting um, bloodshed real. I put it that way. Um, and uh, play me a TikTok, Chris. Thanks, thanks, thanks to you. Thanks Thank very much school for board. being so great. Thank you, school Creating board, for dedicating your time and helping safe. our school. Keeping us Thank you, school and board, just our for quitting our school. Well Thank, you, school Thank, you, school Thank, you, Thank you, school board. Because of you, I'm healthy and free. Thank you, school board, for dedicating your time to us. We appreciate you. Thank you for being a good leader. Thank you, school board. They got the children thanking the school board. All right, I mean, what level of Nazi Hitler youth are we working with right now to train these kids, brainwashing these children? That pisses me off, man. I mean, I mean, when I've consistently said when it comes to the school board and teachers unions and the, and the school system, public school system, burn it to the ground. Yes. I mean, what allegiance are you demanding here? All these kids are masked up, which pisses me off. These kids are masked up, and we saw the picture, you know, just last night, the L.A. Rams are playing uh, San Francisco 49ers, and you got Magic Johnson and Gavin Newsom and all of them. They ain't wearing no mask. They're, they're sitting up there partying it up, you know, a bunch of greasy Fs, and then you got these kids that are all masked up saying, thank you, school board. These kids don't know what they're doing. I'll tell you another crazy story. So a friend of mine's kid, four years old, he goes off to school comes back he says to his mom that afternoon he says i can't be friends with black people because the teacher told a story teacher told a story and said okay there was a little boy two little boys that were school friends and one was white and one was black and uh, and named off the little white boy's name and said that when he came back to school his mother had told him that he was not allowed to play with his friend because his friend was black now they were using that they were trying to prove a point about racism you don't do that with three and four year olds I mean, what in the hell? These, these kids don't understand race. So the takeaway on the part of this little four-year-old boy that I know, he comes home and tells his mom, said, I, I can't have black friends. This is the kind of bullshit brainwashing that's going on out there, and they're doing it under the guise of trying to socially and emotionally teach your child identity issues. And that's the parent's job. That's the job of the home. So this is a bunch of crap, dude. So I'm over it. I'm over it with this. Like my mission is in life. One of my like I'm really trying to choose some things that I want to focus on for the rest of my life. One of them's going to be this so-called public school system. I'm pissed, dude. I'm over it with these people. They're a bunch of tyrants, and they they've gotten above accountability. They've gotten above. But these are the same morons that are running true romance ads in the soccer club. This I'm pissed off. We'll be right back. Oh, as I alluded to in the very opening of the show, chadprather.com. Give it a visit. Check the stories out that we're posting over there. Uh, chadnude.com is uh, where you can subscribe to Blaze TV, as well as Chad on Blaze is where you can get all of your Chad Prather Show merch. And don't forget, folks, go back to leaving us a rating and review. Let's drive this uh, show up. Listen, they're going to censor us. They're going to shut us down. We know with the Rogan thing, they're already putting disclaimers on everything. If somebody even mentions a vaccine or, or anything, they're calling it misinformation. So give us a rating and review and tell your friends about this show. And uh, we do. We need 100,000 subscribers. That would, be, that would make me basically the biggest thing on Blaze TV. Let's go. And it makes me have job security. I love y'all. God bless you. See you tomorrow. It's Tuesday. Bye.